Hey guys, happy Monday. It's me, Sinead DeFries, your uh, lovely host here, always, talking about TV. No, um, seriously though, uh, Sinead isn't here today, unfortunately. Uh, yesterday, on the way home from Comic-Con, or WonderCon, they all conned together. Mm. <laughs> See what I did there? Mm. Uh, she was in a car accident. Uh, she is fine. She just wasn't feeling great today. She is going to a doctor to make sure everything is okay. So, Sinead, we hope you feel better. Uh, I am running the ship today, so I'm going to try my best and uh, do what you do best, Sinead, and that's keep us in check. This show is going to go off the rails immediately. Uh, always here with me, David Griffin. What's up, buddy? If I was in the world of black sails and you were the captain, Josh, <laughs> I would follow your lead. Really? I would follow you. Right into the ship, into the Just rocks. Just like Long John Silver yeah. and Captain Flint. I'd follow you, man. Nice. Yeah. And back for more, Jason Inman. What's up, buddy? Hey guys! I <laughs> uh, just wanted to do a little bit of the Josh Makuka chair turn. Uh, yeah. All my best to Nate. Um, you gotta be careful when you're coming back from the cons, right? You gotta yeah. be careful. You can't be so excited that you got that new pop vinyl. <laughs> that pop vinyl blew your mind. Uh, <laughs> I, last year from Comic Con, I took the train so I would avoid the, the potential car accident. Train is the way to go yeah. from LA. Mm -hmm. I got a exactly. Star Trek bookmark to that all the captains. Ooh. So there's an artist. A and WonderCon. Yeah, so you could get like, you know, big pieces of art, but you also had small pieces of art. One of those was a bookmark, and she had a picture of all the Star Trek captains from the film. So I got, and television series. So I when got you all those. You even have the time uh, to read. David, You're just watching so much TV. David. There's always time to read. We don't talk about books on this show. All right, sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's not a book review. I apologize. Cody. Moving on. Cody, do we talk about books on this show? No. That's exactly right. No. How about no books? We talk about television. Wow. All right, speaking of television, <laughs> these sweet, sweet people. Uh, we got a uh, Game of Thrones teaser trailer walking montage uh, this week. A lot of walking, a lot of dramatic music, a lot of... Listen, we got our three main players. They're all coming to the table. Uh, Daenerys, we don't know what throne she's on. People are saying Dragonstone. People mm -hmm. are saying possibly the Salt Throne. Uh, she does have long sleeves on, apparently. It's cold. Uh, it's cold. She's in West Coast now. It's uh, you, got, you, know, you got Cersei uh, looking stoic as ever. Man, she could just cut glass with that stare. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jon Snow just kind of knowing nothing, walking around Winterfell with his coat. I saw a bunch of Jon Snows at WonderCon. Uh, <laughs> what did you guys think of, of this? Was there anything to it? Or, or are you just jonesing for so much Game of Thrones that... I, you know, there is nothing to it. Don't forget the Night's King was also on his oh, throne right. in, his, in, in uh, this. Yeah, the eyeball. Blue eye. Assuming he's yeah. sitting on his uh, throne of death. Um, <laughs> throne of death. <laughs> I wish. I think we're at the point now that we need to see some footage. I, I think we should have gotten like a little, a nice little teaser. They usually give us two before every season. Sure. Um, we need a little bit more than a walking montage. This makes me wonder if they're a little bit behind in production and the footage is not finished, not color graded to the final product but uh yeah i think we kind of need uh we need a little taste or are they just waiting because they know we will watch anything <laughs> yeah i think i mean they made you watch a block of ice for half an hour uh, more than a half but think an hour, about Jason. it usually in april we're watching game of thrones yes so yeah. no this, game is, of thrones. this is gonna be the first year where we're gonna go to comic-con and it'll only been one episode yeah. yep. typically the show is finished by the time comic-con starts so that makes me wonder how they're going to approach comic-con but year. also when you think about it at comic-con if they only have one episode this may be like the biggest panel they've done because they're probably going to show, show episode Ooh. two you think would they show episode two ahead of time oh, i don't think so because hbo doesn't have a track record for that That's but true. man i could see them maybe showing you the opening scene of episode yeah. two or something yeah. like That's that true. yeah, yeah. Cool. footage that we haven't seen yet because like you said by the time we get to comic-con usually it's over yeah so they don't have anything they're like we're going into production soon. Oh, why are they Beatles? I don't know. Yeah, but, so uh, it's tough too because we have you know I have friends that you know are hardcore book readers. You know yes. I've read the books too. I'm not quite as hardcore as that, but they're kind of avoiding the show now. They're yeah. putting the show off to the side because yep. they they want to wait for Winds of Winter to come from George R. R. Martin whenever that happens. We'll just show up in 2020. Yeah, I know. It's like it's. I mean, there. It's crazy. We have 13 hours left, and that's it. 13 yep. hours. Well, 13, well, I don't know. There might be like a 90 minute episode here correct. and there, but we have 13 episodes of the series, and it's done. Cody, I'd like you to mention. David has mentioned the book books. Twice now. Sorry, on a TV I talk. Show. It's TV talk. It's not. Twice. It's not book talk. But book talk premieres next week with your host, David, David Griffin. Griffin. <laughs> That'll. That's that's a, a must watch here on Collider. <laughs> book talk. If you're it's a real the, page turner of an episode. If you're looking for the perfect video to put your baby to sleep. May I recommend <laughs> Collider Book Talk? Spend an hour with me. <laughs> <laughs> Talking books here on Book Talk. All right, uh, uh, let's go to the next story. Uh, this was one of my favorite things that I saw last week was uh, 
Comedy Central, basically, after Stephen Colbert left, which, by the way, Stephen Colbert, for the first time in a long time, CBS took away, uh, they have now the lead in Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon dominated all the demographics, but overall, ratings-wise, Stephen Colbert knocked out Jimmy Fallon. It's because Colbert has finally figured out how to be a late-night talk show host and right. not be his character, which was the biggest divorce between his stuff, but But also, too, it. in the political turmoil, everybody's like, we need a laugh. We need a smart guy up there. And it's yeah, Stephen yeah. Colbert. Uh, anyway, so that, that slot that Stephen Colbert left empty, Larry M Wilmore tried to fill it. I don't think they gave Larry Wilmore enough of a chance, to be honest with you. I didn't ever think he found his footing as far as finding his talk show mm -hmm. host. An amazing contributor, tough guy to fill it. Uh, Midnight has been there for a while. I like At Midnight. I think it's fine. Uh, but they've been waiting for that political satire, and I think this is it. The guy that is playing uh, Donald Trump, he's an mm -hmm. uh, uh, unbelievable Donald Trump impersonator. Wolanik is his last name, I believe. I, I got to look that up. I did not write that in the notes. That is my bad. Uh, really well-prepared host here on TV Talk. <laughs> but it's we called need the... you, Sinead. Yes. Uh, the President's Show is going to fill that slot, and it's basically going to be a guy impersonating Donald Trump. His Donald Trump is incredible, and it's going to be a political satire. And I think that Comedy Central has been jonesing for that. To be honest with you, we've talked about this on the show before. Comedy Central is losing flagship programming yeah. like that. Because uh, Alcoholics is done, right? Is that for, uh, workaholics. Workaholics, sorry. Workaholics okay. had, a, had a great <laughs> Alcoholics. Time. Shows you how much Comedy the, Central shows Alcoholics are not done. <laughs> That's David. a spinoff. We're still here. Um, the. Workaholics is done. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Key and Peele was finished last year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, Comedy Central is really jonesing for that program. And like I said last week or two weeks ago, if you guys want to check out a show on Comedy Central, Detroiters is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, Comedy Central is kind of like an afterthought at this point. Mm -hmm. Just and they Park. used to be a flag show. No. No. Yeah, no. South Park, but South Park only has eight to ten episodes. Right. And then, you know, and yeah. they're back to back to back to mm -hmm. back. And they don't have anything else. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing this mostly because... Listen, I, whatever your political affiliation is, you, you should be able to laugh at both parties because it is pretty absurd at a lot of points. And I think this dude does a really good Donald Trump. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned uh, the South the South Park. Yeah, show. this reminds me a lot of that old show you guys might remember that's called That's My Bush by yeah. uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. And it was like during the Bush administration. And it was kind of like this bad dad sitcom just set in the White House with a, another George Bush impersonator. impersonator. Yeah. And it wasn't the greatest of show. Like, it should have worked, but it, at every turn, it did not work. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think this guy's uh, Trump impersonation is spot on. And I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with this. But I'm worried, will it just be another That's My Bush? Mm -hmm. And or could it just be totally one note? That, well, that's, exactly. what, that's what I'm a little worried about, too. And, you know, I'm not talking politics. You know, my, yeah. my, my book talk show is coming out, but we're not doing political talk <laughs> Are you talking here politics on, on your TV. book show? Um, but what I'm talking about here is that because there's so much Trump and personaries out there, there's so much you know comedy directed at Trump. I wonder if we'll if it'll start getting old sooner than later. Just because Agreed. we see too much of it, you know, I'm yeah. just wondering if it's going to be too much. Uh, it's going to be oversaturated. That's exactly. Like, about. how long can you carry this? Like, Veep right. does something very well because you could invest it in her storyline and where she's she not could... based. Well, she's not like a real. No, she's not based yeah. in reality. So we get to experience like how far. And by the way, Veep's coming back. Really excited for that. Ooh. Um, Talk about the best political One of the funniest, the, probably the funniest show on television. Uh, I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right. Like, where do you, beyond episode one, where do you go with this show? I mean, mm. listen, uh, if you watch la uh, Last Week Tonight, which I think is my favorite political satire show, mm. right next to like a Bill Maher, but, and, and even though they do skew extremely left sometimes, uh, they are very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And when Donald Trump didn't shake Angela Merkel's hand, he had a field day with it. And I think that Donald Trump gives enough content that you can, but again, you are, you are really teetering that line of, is it a sketch? Yeah. Is it a show? Is it like man on the street as Donald Trump? The guy's name is Anthony Adamaniuk. Kind of sounds like Adamantium, but Adamaniuk. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you are really teetering the line. I, I, I just, you, you, Comedy Central has really felt, I don't think they knew that they were going to feel as bad an absence of that when Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert left. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they knew. They're really struggling right now for their identity. Really? And they need a show. They need, they, and, you know, uh, Trevor Noah, I, who I really like, I think has not reached um, the comfortability with America that Jon Stewart has. Like yeah. he's still, you can still kind of feel that he's still searching for the type of show that he wants to do, and, mm -hmm. and America's not sure, but like, yeah, you're right. Comedy Central doesn't have a channel identity right now, and they're searching hard for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree 100%. All right, uh, let's move on to this. Well, listen, American Gods has been teasing us with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We got trailers, multiple trailers. They had a trailer on the Walking Dead finale last night. Mm -hmm. uh, now they they gave us the opening credits of the show, at least of the first one. It looks, you know what it kind of looks like? 
to me, it looks like if you gave the opening credits of Daredevil ecstasy. <laughs> right? It looks like a rave. Like, it's a rave of the Daredevil opening credits. Like, there's a lot more neon and, like, there's a Medusa head. I was going to say, it looks like the neon sign graveyard in Las Vegas. You ever been to that place? That place Go is check it out. awesome. Go check it out. Another great place to do drugs. I don't encourage <laughs> whoa, drugs. Whoa. Do not encourage drugs, guys. If you're out there doing drugs, don't do them. At, unless you're at a party. Or you're but, watching Book Talk. Or you're watching Book Grimm. Talk, the only time you should be doing <laughs> That's drugs. Right, you do. That's okay. Yeah. Like you're watching Book Talk. Yeah. Uh, but this, this opening credits, I don't think I've been more excited about a show maybe in the last like three or four months than I am for American Gods because we've had some really downer pilots that have come our way. And mm -hmm. like series, and in like the last four or five months, mm -hmm. we've been sure. like, yeah, I'm this fuck, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> shit, <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> Like, oh man, this pilot's gonna be crazy. No, this wasn't. So the fact that we've been like talking about this, uh, Jeremy Johns gave me the uh, American Gods book. Sorry, I'm bringing up a book. I won't read it, but he did give it to me. So thank you, Jeremy. Third, third book reference. No, so, I think we're up to like four or five. Yeah. Oh, good, very good. Very but good. I did go on and read like a full kind of Cliff Notes breakdown of American you got Gods. The, you after you got last the yellow week's. book. You got the, I got the book. Cliff Notes, yeah. and yeah, I, this just and listen. Ian McShane can do no wrong. I've said it multiple times about the show. But if we're talking opening credits to get you kind of psyched for the show, they are releasing kind of the right amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you mm -hmm. think of it? I mean, the opening credits to me are a little weird. I have read American Gods. Ian McShane, again, can yeah. do no wrong. I have Brian Fuller behind this series. Yeah. I am excited to see what the series is going to be, especially knowing the source material. The opening credits, I feel like, are part and parcel with this this trend that is in opening credits now, where it's like, let's do these opening credits that are just like this idea that may or may not have anything to do with the actual show. Sure. Like, and the other example I, I would give on this is Preacher. Preacher's opening credits are just like random shots of like a car pulling up the collar, a lot of brown. Yeah. Uh, and this one, <laughs> a lot of brown, and there's a lot yeah. of brown in the opening credits. And so I agree with you, like even the Daredevil opening credits are the same yes. way. It's just like blood dripping over a city. Well, blood doesn't really have that much to do with Daredevil. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Uh, I kind of felt the same way about this. I was like- Was it blood or was it wax? <laughs> Daredevil. What, is, what does wax have to do with a blind man, Josh? That's true. What does wax have to do with it, too, Jason? You but what does neon have to do with God? Yeah, and what, what does neon have to well, do with God? Let me tell you about opening credits. Opening credits is actually a category in the Emmys. You can win an award for that. Game of Thrones has won an award for it. Black Sales has are awesome you, opening credits. Are you putting credits. opening credits in for Book Talk? There will be opening credits for Book Talk featuring not books, but remotes. <laughs> And people putting them down and then picking up the book instead. Whoa. We're going to go reverse Josh's. Uh, How dare you? I'm sorry, buddy. We're reversing how? things. Dare you, I'm really going. excited about this, okay. though. I, I love Ricky Whittle. I always talk about how I love the show The 100 on CW. Ricky Whittle came from The 100. Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln. I'm glad to see him doing something else. He's got a good look to him. He's interesting. Uh, Ian McShane's fantastic. It's about the old gods and the new gods. You have Ian McShane, who's Mr. Wednesday. The screen just went yep. crazy there for a second. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, but you have um, Ian McShane, who plays basically Odin. You know, you have yeah. all these other characters mm -hmm. coming in, you know, battling these new gods, these gods of like electronics and money and all this stuff. So I think I'm really fascinated about what the show's going to be. There is so much you can do with a series like this. Yes. And it seems like you can deviate. I, don't, I haven't read the book, uh, mm -hmm. Jason, you have to correct me, but it feels like, like Game of Thrones, if you want to, because it's such a rich text, you can deviate from it a little bit and yeah, kind of there, do your own interpretation this, of it. This book, this book has a lot of possibilities of things that it talks about that you could expand into, I would say, other seasons I mean, or whatever. It's older, so the world yeah. has changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the book is, is it 20 years old? Is it that old? No, I think it's 10. Oh, just 10. Okay, I think it's sure. 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, here's the thing. I think that Stars has been jonesing for a flagship show. Listen, I think Black Sails. Outlander's big for them. Outlander it, it, is it, big. Ash caliber. versus Evil Dead. Ash versus yeah. Evil Dead. But here's the thing. Stars, like, those are shows that we like. Yeah. <clears throat> they mm. aren't getting huge ratings. Black Sails, a show that you like, a lot of you like. They're not getting huge ratings. Um, <clears throat> like, I love that show, Flesh and Bone. Nobody watched that show. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was the other one we just mentioned? You said Ash versus Evil Dead. You said Black Sails. What was, what was the... Well, they also have uh, the Girlfriend Experience. Oh, you said Outlander. Outlander, Outlander yeah. Outlander, but Outlander. Again, Outlander, Outlander gets... They've won gold. They have, they have that award cred. Though, level. They do have yeah. some award. You're right. You're yeah. right. But this it's not is not Game of Thrones, so I agree with you. And I, but I think they don't that, have like, their Walking Dead. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't have their Walking yeah. Dead. They don't have their Game of Thrones. Um, I would love to see this be the show that, that gives us a flagship for stars. Because sure. they're, they're, really they're the little baby. I mean, you have HBO, 
Showtime, and then below is Stars. Star They're kind of like Cinemax Star together. Cinemax, mm-hmm. but Cinemax is under HBO's umbrella, so they yeah. get you know mm-hmm. you know they don't quite have that credit yet, but they're working their way up. It's nice to see Stars growing up because it used to just always be the channel that hey, I want to watch Superman Returns for the right. 17th time. <laughs> right, Here's Stars it is. And, and they also bought were bought out by Lionsgate, so they have a billion dollar investment now that they can start developing all of all of Lionsgate library. Yeah. They can mm-hmm. make those into television series if they want. Ooh. And I will say sometimes with source material, you're given a little bit more freedom to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you've already purchased the source material, so you know what's coming with it. Mm-hmm. Like A Big Little Lies, which we'll talk about in a, a little bit later, because that show, I think, is HBO's best miniseries in years. Like that, yeah. I love, absolutely love that. And you're getting, like we talked about last week, you're getting some of these huge name talents to come in and show. I mean, they the performances in Big Little Lies were out of this. Yeah, world. even Nicole Kidman, Reese Witherspoon, Laura yeah. Dern, these big, big stars coming yeah. in to do a television series, and that's fantastic. Laura Dern doing her best Maud Garrett impression, just incredible. <laughs> um, so let's go into the superhero rundown. This week at WonderCon, uh, Agents of Shield, which it comes back in a few, still a few weeks. Like it's been, mm-hmm. it feels like it's been off the air for two years because that show. I know you don't watch. Nope, it's been off the air for three years for me. <laughs> But it has gone like <laughs> full tilt, and then it just chopped us at this this unbelievable cliffhanger. And now they tell us at WonderCon that uh, Ada, who plays the robot in the show, will be Madame Hydra. So, again, you what Agents of Shield has done this season. It's a shame that more people aren't watching it, including my two good buddies on the on the panel right now, because <laughs> I'm loving the fact that they're adding Madame Hydra. And the cliffhanger did tease a little bit about Hydra coming up in the next season, because we really haven't seen anything Hydra since last season when Ward went full Hydra mm-hmm. on the on the Ghost Planet, uh, like I like to call it, the sepia tone. I planet. do remember seeing that planet because when we used to do our recap shows, we'd all yeah. come in and we have a little snack together, and when we were watching the show, I would see that. That blue plan. Everything yeah. was just very blue. It was like the yeah. filter was on blue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. was, it was really hard to watch. It <laughs> it's very blue. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, uh, cheap pitch black, as I would yeah. call it. Yes, one hundred percent. It was the not so chronicles of Riddick. Uh, let's go on to Supergirl. I, honestly, dude, this might have been my favorite episode of the season. Why? Because I, first of all, I've been begging for Terry Hatcher. I really loved. Uh, I, I think she's an amazing villain. Mm. She was she was great as a, basically a villain on Desperate Housewives, totally different show. But uh, I thought that this whole thing is like, hey, I came to talk to you, and the mom's like, listen, bitch, don't be talking to my son. We don't like you. We don't like that your planet's here. And then she had Michelangelo uh, or Raphael Krypton Kryptonite uh, yep. size yep, or whatever they call mm-hmm. that. I'm telling you, the action was awesome. I I liked all of like the relationship stuff. Was really well done, and you saw Monel kind of fight, and Kevin Sorbo stand up to his wife. There was an amazing family dynamic, and finally, I really cared about the relationship between Kara and Monel. I agree with you on yeah. that. Like, and I, 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 I mean, I guess we want to say spoilers here. Yeah. Um, Kevin Sorbo ha- was, has been fantastic in these three episodes, and it's really fitting because he has amazing presence, and he was the runner-up for Superman, Lois and Clark. So it's nice that he's sort of in a Superman role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did not see his death coming. Yeah. I did not see his death coming. And so, like, for him to be killed in this episode, Super uh, it was Just like, wow. Yeah. Uh, also, too, yeah, I think Mon and Supergirl definitely stepped up this episode, but also, too, the uh, the, the most famous uh, female-female uh, relationship on, on, on t- television right now was really good as well. Yeah. Kind yes. of exploring their past and meeting a, an ex-girlfriend and, and all that was just, it, it, was, it was very moving. It was a good episode. I would like to see more Maggie, Alex, Working. Is there together. a term for the Maggie Alex? I know it's always like, you know. Malix? Is, is it Malix? Is that uh, what the term is? It's always a combination. I, I, I've, heard it, I've heard it called a Sandverse. Oh, oh Sandverse. Sandverse. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, Sandverse. Sandverse. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed the Sandverse relationship mm-hmm. this week. Yeah. But that. don't you. I, would you like to see them work more together in like a chasing down bad guys kind of a thing? Maybe to give her promotion. Did you give her, get her job at the uh, DOA? DOA, yeah. The DEO? DEO. I know. I was thinking yeah. of like, wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> DEA, drug enforcement. The DEA is a real DO, place. Yeah. yeah. DOA might be too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, no. I also liked in this episode too. We got the, the the we got Linda Carter back. I know Linda Carter, seventies yeah. Wonder Woman's back. Um, what take, is she, Jason? What is she? She what, is what a, race is that? She, she a white is Martian? a Durlin. Oh, a Durlin. Uh, they 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 mentioned Durlins a couple times uh, mm-hmm. before. Um, Durlins are 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 these uh, shape shifting aliens okay. in the Legion of Superheroes time, the thirty first century. And if you notice in this episode, we made sure on the camera that we saw the saw the Legion of Superheroes ring in the Fortress of Solitude. Right. They're Ooh. a very famous DC heroes group and everything. Mon L is a member of okay. the Legion of Superheroes. Mm-hmm. 
I, I think to me, again, everything in Supergirl is pointing towards uh, we're going to get the Legion of Superheroes next season. So is Monel safe? Remember, like, I know earlier in the season, because of the story from the comics, everybody thought Monel was going to go bad. Mm. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen now. You think he's still going to break bad? You think there's a chance for that, Jason? I don't know if he's going to break bad, but I could see him getting severely injured, maybe fighting mm. his mom. Oh. I don't think Monel will last past this season. Really? Oh. No. No. Even with their off camera showmance? I. Yes, because I think that Monel. And they might change that because of the off-camera showmance. I mean, but, people are really kind of jumping on board. But uh, Monel's story has always been: he shows up, he saves the day. Oh crap! I get I'm around some lead, and that's poisonous to me because lead is poisonous to Daxamite, just like kryptonite is poison to right. Kryptonians. Um, and they, the only solution they have to save him is to send him off into the Phantom Zone. Um. And he sits there for a thousand years until the Legion of Superheroes saves him. Yep, you, you could probably harbor a grudge after a thousand years sitting someplace. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but uh, I don't know. I've always seen that, like the finale, like he's gonna get knocked to the Phantom Zone. Oh. Nothing like you just go to like an old <clears throat> power plant, get some lead paint. There you go. Going for Monel. <laughs> uh, this episode of Flash. Let's move on to Flash. Uh, yeah, there we got some Flash That's graphics up there. Is it? There we go. <laughs> Guys, what the hell's going on in Flash? Like, can we? Is there? So what happens is, Tell me, and Jason told us this last week. What happens is when you can't save someone in the past, you know what you do? You go to the future. Yep. Yeah. And that's the decision that you know, Barry comes to, is that he's got to go to the future to save Iris. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to solve everything. Now, it's got to work, Jason, right? Uh, it's got to work. Here's I mean, the thing. When that, what I was going to say, when that moment happened, did, oh. I think collectively everybody watching it, and I hope you guys did too, just did the... No, total face Because Barry, every time he total does something, every time he manipulates time... <laughs> Things go wrong. Yep. Yes. Doc Brown warned us many times, Marty, 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 yep. you can't mess with the timeline. Don't do that. Th bad things happen. Unless there's uh, uh, aberrations, yes. and you have to go in the back and fix them. That, that's what Lee's uh, Legend of Tomorrow well, does. Well, it's, diff it's, it's, diff it's a different idea if your different. whole job is to fix the timeline. Right, that's Then different. you can time travel. That's different. But if you're just like, you know what? I wonder what I'm going to eat tonight. You know what? I'm going to travel to the future. <laughs> <laughs> what is I it? need lasagna in the future. <laughs> Shit, the timeline. <laughs> Fuck. What new flavors has Ben and Jerry's created? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. What this aberration created? Created Collider Book Talk? Oh, yeah. no. David actually has a show. If you go to Earth 2, Book Talk exists. Book Talk's the number one show on Collider. Good Earth Lord, two. I can't wait to skip Earth 2 and go to Earth 3. Uh, I, it, it just... I, listen, I, I honestly feel like... And somebody tweeted me this, and... I, that... Because I don't... I, listen, I, I dug my grave one time by saying I didn't like Iris and Barry together, mostly because I don't think they have great on-screen chemistry. Uh, I do miss Patty Spivet. A little bit. Peace, Biv. Peace, Biv. Yep. Uh, I, 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 but there is, and everybody keeps tweeting at us about like theories of who Savitar is. To be honest with you, I don't think I even care. Yeah. I the the amount of like giving craps on this season after the musical and everything that they have been giving us is like. It's either a one-off or they're chasing Savitar or they're fixing a timeline. The whole thing, there just doesn't seem to be any kind of adhesiveness mm -hmm. keeping it together. Mm -hmm. What do we have on Supergirl? We have Cadmus and we have Lena Luthor and we have that whole storyline. And now we have the Daxmite ship out there. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Arrow, we have the Bratva, we have Prometheus, we have the Vigilante, we have Adrian Chase. There's a bunch of villains that are still going on. Legends, they have Legion of Doom. Legends, yeah. they have yep. Legion and of Doom. Legion of Doom wins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So right? I got a question. Jason, so, but I'm just oh, saying no, with sorry, Flash yeah. real quick. Yeah. What do we have? We have this Savitar guy that is there a couple episodes and then he's gone. Barry right. is not the only speedster. So they locked up Barry and they're like, hey, stop messing with the speed, the, the timeline. Let us take care of Iris. Mm -hmm. And then when this is all over, we'll let you back out if you promise not to mess with the speed force. Or what the hell? Just throw the dude in the freaking phantom zone for Christ's sake. Have him hang out with Monel because I'm getting really tired. Sorry, David. I, no, I was listening. I guess both of you, you know. I think the villain, that's the problem this, this year, is the villain's just not as, he's not interesting enough because he does kind of look like a Transformer. And I'm sure they'll explain in the finale there's a purpose to why he looks the way he does, but Zoom was terrifying. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you it. know, what, what, not for me. Really, yeah. I, I thought I, I, I love the voice that he was terrifying. Ego Barthon was awesome. He's killing it in Legends of Tomorrow right now. Yeah. You know, in Legion the, of the, Doom. The problem that I feel, with, and this is this is my problem with mm -hmm. Zoom. This is my problem with Savitar, is that first season, the reason why we invested so much in Reverse Flash was because we found out that he was a character that we had come to love over ten episodes. Yeah. He was Harrison Wells, and that flip, you were just like. Oh my God, it's his dad mm -hmm. as a speedster fighting the Flash. The problem with Zoom is that 
we didn't have that connection. So Zoom's just this guy in black leather running around being like, I can beat you, Flash. And you're just like, why? I don't care. Right. I don't know who you are. Savitar is the same problem. He just he glows. Metal. He he's, glows. A metal, yeah. he's a metal version of Zoom with absolutely no stakes. Mm -hmm. Besides killing Iris. And they keep messing. Like, listen, if you don't want Iris to die, lock her up somewhere. Yeah. Just be like, hey, Iris, how about you don't leave the house until the date when you get killed? I, w I will agree that the problem is, yeah. is that we're not getting enough information about who Savitar is and his purpose and what's this idea. And I think... Keeps appearing and reappearing. Yeah, I, I think it might have been a more interesting if we had... Let's say, like, in episode five or whatever, we just said, like, okay, Julian is Savitar. Now, I'm not saying that's who Savitar mm -hmm. is. I don't know. Let's just say in episode five, they were like, Julian is Savitar. And then Barry learns that fact. And then the he's fighting Savitar at the same time that he's friends with Julian. And so it's the idea... Playing I both. So, yeah, so the idea of the season, the moral of the season becomes... Should I just lock this guy up even though he's not Savitar yet? Or do I just let him roam free because I know he'll become Savitar? And then becomes this moral issue. Knowing Barry, he jumps to conclusions. I'll yep. just jump to conclusion, Matt. And he <laughs> is, is like, oh, crap, Julian. I'm going to confront him in episode seven. Well, keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Like, let's wait and see how this is to try and make a calculated yep. decision so I don't have to mess with the timeline again. In his head, it makes perfect sense. But, of yep. course, in ours, we've seen what he's done before. Yeah. It's going to fail. But I, but I will say that the preview for the next episode, the once at Future Flash that we're not going to see until a month. We get there, Emo Barry. We get we, get the little hair to the side. We also get a new Flash costume. You know, yeah. it's a lot more redder, which yeah. I really dig. That episode, if they play it right, could, I think, fix a lot of the problems that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm hopeful for that. All right. We'll see. Listen. Got to wait a few weeks, about three weeks off. I'm not show. messing with the timeline because I don't want any book talk, though I love you and I want you to have your own show. It's not about books. All right. It's, it's, it's going on Earth 2 right now. <laughs> it's, it's happening. I would now. love to see the Earth 2 poster of Collider Book Talk. Please, yeah. somebody on the internet make that. Please. We'd love to see it. <laughs> all right. Let's end on Legends and then we'll get talking on Legion and 13 Reasons Why and all that kind of fun stuff. We, we talk about Arrow 2? Let's, oh, just say Arrow was, Arrow? let's just talk about Arrow was good. Oh, right? my bad. Yeah. Arrow done. was fantastic. Simple. Arrow was great. Arrow was great. <laughs> They, it, it, I don't know how they're gonna, what, what because Adrian Chase driving away whistling yep. was badass. When he was driving away whistling, I was like, this is not a CW show. That felt like an HBO moment of a bad guy villain whistling away. That was a really, really great episode. By the way, Lance got his best line in this entire the entire season in this episode. Mm -hmm. So he comes into the office at the very beginning, and because they're trying to explain Oliver's absence, and he goes, "I told you, City Council, that you were at some spiritual hoo ha thing," <laughs> and she bought it. <laughs> and I was like, spiritual hoo-ha? <laughs> Lance, I don't care with those hippie hoo-ha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, th this, this episode of Arrow, uh, for me, because the Bratva finally oh, came in. So good. The whole give and take. I thought the team came together and an incredible use of T-Spheres. Yes. T-Spheres mm, have been yep. awesome. I know Medina's probably psyched. And I like, too, we got the, uh, the new look at the, like, the suits. Kind of yes. like yeah. Look, that, that was a nice look at the mm -hmm. end there. Barry's yeah. not ready for the hood. And again, I think mm -hmm. I think the uh, I think the Bratva is I think we're setting up our season six villain. I think they're gonna I think it's either gonna be the Bratva or season six is gonna be Kovar because we saw him come back to life yeah. as a DC Comics villain, the KG Beast. I'm Ooh. fine with more Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. He was great. Mm -hmm. The yeah. KG Beast. Mm -hmm. He's That's a Batman cool. villain, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. It's sort of a Batman works. show. All right, let's talk legends, boys. Yeah, this was the villains taking over. So mm -hmm. the villains like rewrote reality with the Spear of Destiny, and the legends had to wake up out of this reality. Mick Rory was the one that mm -hmm. woke them up. I thought this was a, episode was a lot of fun. We got a mention of Tommy. We got to see the Black Flash again. Yep. Um, we get a nice little prison break joke where Captain Cold says to Mick Rory, "Hey, hey, you want to get? You want to let the cops arrest us so we can go to prison so we can break out? We did it once before." Bam. Yeah, it's like. Bunch. And Mick was like, yeah. "That sounds boring." This, I mean, David, <laughs> what do you think? This episode is. Deep comic book Easter eggs, mm -hmm. having fun with the timeline, and, and, and silly fun. This is what I want Legends to be. Well, I think that's what I want more of these superhero shows to be. Just have mm -hmm. fun. That's what the show did. I love how the role reversal, you know, it, it was great seeing, um, uh, what's everybody's name, Firestorm. You yes, know, and like as how, the boss as over As the Martin boss Stein. over Martin Stein. Yep. And Martin Stein's worried about seeing his daughter and all these other things going on. We just had a lot of fun with it. It was fun like when they robbed the bank in the, in the beginning and they, like, they just let him rob the bank. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was you. Yeah, the they cop, let him yeah, rob yeah. the bank. Yeah, Captain Cold's and, and Heatway's perfect idea of reality is this is Central City where they can rob everywhere, but the cops won't arrest them. And, but, 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 but then Nick has this like dilemma. He's like, well, what's the point? If I know yeah. we're going to... And he's like, hey, if you want to get away, I can organize a getaway for us if you want. He's like, no, I want it to be real and authentic. So yeah. it was just 
is fun. Josh, I think you would have liked it. Even though you, you haven't seen like, the season. And then also it. the end of with this episode. This, with this, four, with this four or five, three or four week layoff, I think I'm just going to watch like the last eight episodes of Legends. Mm-hmm. And then well, I'll, I'll the finale is next week. The finale is next. The finale is the only episode of CW that will air this week, I believe. So how are we going to rewrite reality? I don't know. How are we going to do it? Comics. Comics. The Spear of Destiny is no more. And they had to try to rewrite history now without it. The Spear of Destiny has gone. They just, well, it's a real thing, Josh. It's yeah, a real yeah. thing. I know. Well, the reverse, the, uh, Earbar Thon, I thought was another cool moment, mm-hmm. showed up in his reverse flash yellow and black costume, which we mm-hmm. haven't seen all season, yeah. and like destroyed the Spear of Destiny in front of her. And he actually let everybody go because the villains, Damian Dark and Merlin, betrayed him too. And he was already like, all right, you guys can walk away because like, tch, I'm more powerful than all what? of you, and you're not a threat. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was just like, crash, broke the Spear of Destiny. No, no, he actually uh, put it into... Uh, What's the device that actually the one the device that caused Flash to get his powers? Uh, uh, I forgot uh, the, the particle technical accelerator. Particle, yeah, he, 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 he threw it, it into a particle accelerator. accelerator. Yeah, Martin yeah. Stein no, right. created a new version of the particle accelerator, and that's how he destroyed. Because they said Stein's that the, man. the only way to destroy it was with the blood of Christ. But I guess uh, the particle accelerator is close enough. Close enough. Yeah, yeah. It's close good enough. Comics. Yeah, that's a comics. Comics. <laughs> yeah. uh, Okay, before we get into the Legion finale, uh, we have first of all we have Archer uh, premiering this week, which is awesome, and. An amazing thing, Archer is doing a PI app, so you can go and download this app, which is kind of it's kind of badass. I downloaded it, and you can click on things like you can take pictures during the show. You can take pictures of your house. You can take and he'll come on the app and start talking to you, and he's a total smartass like he is on the show. So you can help him solve the cases of the show because uh, this season of Archer will be Archer Dreamland, where they're going back to the '40s, like it's uh, LA Confidential, like oh, nice. it's totally film noir. And the app, the Archer PI app, it's you download it and you just make the show totally interactive, and you're kind of like part of that ragtag group of morons. And that show, I mean, listen, if you're not watching Archer, you're because I think to me. It's like Archer, Rick and Morty are probably the two funniest animated mm-hmm. shows on television. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm a huge Family Guy fan, but Archer just knocks it out of the park every time because he is what I would be as a as a spy, always messing it up, mm-hmm. always getting that, too drunk. That seems accurate, and always going after the girl <laughs> instead of the actual uh, point of the mission, yeah. which is what the Archer PI app does. So, if you guys download the app, let me know what you think of it. Uh, check it out. We watch the show together. You know, you can take pictures. All this stuff is a totally interactive app. It's unlike, really unlike many apps I've actually downloaded because I'm not really a big app guy, but this one I downloaded it makes your TV interactive. It's sort of like reading a book, mm-hmm. but while watching television. There you go. Makes it all together. Let's talk Legion, FX, the series finale. Well, not series finale. The season finale. So we had a full eight episodes of this absolute mm-hmm. madness. Mm-hmm. I read something that was pretty cool that talked all about his shirt. Oh, do tell. So, like, whenever he, the one part he had a, a like a thing going this way, mm-hmm. and that was when she was in control. Whenever he has an arrow pointing up to him, that's when he's in control. Oh, like in the picture right behind you. Correct. Yeah, and he's got that right. So he's in control. If you notice in this episode, he had two arrows. So he was in. I was thinking what it meant was he's in control of both people. Or at least he was trying oh, to be. He was in control of the Shadow King, mm-hmm. or you know, and. Dude, the makeup on on uh, Aubrey Plaza as the Shadow King mm-hmm. was incredible. This episode mm-hmm. was like the tar feet stepping out. Overall, and the makeup on the uh, Division Three guy. Division Three. Oh yeah, my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, with the, the burn scars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's opening right. montage of mm-hmm. him. I love that we got his backstory. That's yeah. How, that's how they opened it. Yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And because we, we really, as far as backstories, all we really have is Legion's backstory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I really thought that, and besides the post credit scene, which mm-hmm. I think I had a problem with, did you have a problem with the... Really? The ending? You didn't like, like driving away? In the- we'll, no, we'll, no, no. We'll get, to, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. The Anyway, this was an incredible season finale yes. of a show that was, for, for the most part, when I look back on the show, there really wasn't a giant plot. Yes, they were trying to get away from Division 3. Mm. Yes, they were trying to figure out his brain and where he was, and where they fit in, and where mm-hmm. their lives were, and just how strong of a villain, not as strong of a mutant he was, that he encapsulated these entire people's lives all in his brain mm-hmm. to try and figure out how they could make him useful in their life because they realized just how important he was in going forward. Mm. What I did love is that Division Three, and it, it may be in... You know, in X Men movies, they've they've said it a couple times. We're like, mutants don't they shouldn't be people. Like we should be locking them up. 
the guy from Division Three said it really well. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to let my daughter go in preschool in the sandbox. Who's going to win that sandbox yeah. war? Kind of a really funny thing to think about of like, mm -hmm. okay, these mutants are powerful. They don't know how to use their power, and they might hurt a girl in a sandbox. Mm -hmm. Kind of crazy to think about, but that's where the Division Three and the, you know, the paranoia comes from. Really, really dug this season finale. What would you think of, I guess, every, I mean, we've been talking about it, but of, of where we are right now. I know the, the pile, a lot of people said it was a little slow. You know, it took some time to get going. I thought it was the same way with the finale, but I felt like it was all worth it. You mm -hmm. know, because we had seen so much of David. We know his struggle. We know the other characters, a lot of their backgrounds. So, you know, from the guy who can go inside your dreams and get, he remembers everything. We saw his mom die. You know, we got all these different character pieces. We got the guy from Division Three. We get to see, you know, his recovery and his relationship with his, his husband. And they have an adopted son. And, mm -hmm. you know, watching him watch TV night after night, just sitting there, you know, thinking. We get all these characters' backstory. I thought Gene Smart was yeah. incredible in this episode as well. She just got her husband back. Now he's literally off on a road trip right now with, with, with the Shadow King. He finally so, remembered her. Yes, well, he did. Yeah, he finally remembered, finally remembered her, her as he's climbing up those nuclear yep. power reactors. Yep. And that was awesome too. That slow run at each other, like with their force fields, yeah, like yeah, just yeah. building Unreal. up and then the collision and then just explode. Yeah, it was that like was a Street Fighter mode. Yep. Yeah, right it was like Street Fighter mode. So yeah. I thought it all paid off because everyone talks about like you know slow or deliberately paced, whichever term you want to use. It was slow in parts, but I feel yeah. like it all you know culminated in this well done episode and it made me interested to know what's going to happen in season two like yeah. i was left like i want to see more not like that's it i really want to see more well what's it did too next. because it did the excellent thing about the division three guy like he started off the season as our finale and i'm first to admit like the pilot did scare me away like the pilot did scared it? me away yeah i and i didn't watch the show for like three to four weeks just because i was like i don't like that pilot and then you guys were the ones that convinced me to go back i went mm -hmm. back and watched it all and i, I thought it was great um so yeah, you're right. There was a slow starter, but the Division Three guy, the idea of turning him to our ally, especially that scene where David has, and he's like, look, we got to work together because the Shadow King thing is way big, a bigger threat than right. anybody else. Um, two, I also, uh, I love that jacket that David wearing, that, gr that gray jacket. Uh, uh, if anybody knows where to find that, uh, please tell me. <laughs> I want to get that. That was another great thing. I, I, I loved all of the costuming in yeah. the show. Just the, the show is so well shot. The yeah, colors, like, even the interrogation room, they had these nice little blue uh, circular gels that were really nice. Um, now, the one negative is, I am very excited about where this next season is going to go, and Noah Hawley said that the next season of Legion is going to come out about the same time because he wants to do it about okay. that. But he also said that the next season is going to be about how is David going to cope with not having this piece of him that he's yeah. had since he was a baby. He won't have the Shadow King. And how is, how is his identity going to change? Mm -hmm. Because this big section of his mind is gone. Um, so season two. Do you think we're going to get Charles Xavier in season two? Maybe in the finale. All Patrick Stewart has to do is just show up. Just come in, put if, a suit on, just show up, say, hey, what's we, happening? Leave. One talk is over, yeah. so he's got to yeah, he's got yeah. Yeah. If we get him, it's in the finale of next season, okay. and it's one scene. Okay. Right. Um, that's my prediction. But so this ball comes up after the end credit scene, and it, and it sucks David inside the ball. And so now David's oh, trapped no. in this ball. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Did you miss you're that? Not, did okay. you not watch I didn't the watch end credits? So, oh. every, so Legion has the end credits. So you watch the little the credits with the yeah. white and the purple and the green. And then after that, David and, and, the, and his lady, I forget her name, is... Uh, Rachel Keller yep. is just the best. She, they're standing out there uh, on the, the, the deck and they're talking. And then this little ball shows up. And he's like, oh, that must be one of uh, so-and-so's devices. It scans him, sucks him inside it. Oh. And then you see him inside the device being no, like, let me out, let yeah. me out. And she's like, David, David. And it flies away. Oh, it no. was yeah. It was uh, it was a little jarring. Quite abrupt. Yes. Quite L abrupt. A little jarring. I, I will say that the there was something to me. I think the MVP of the second half of the season mm -hmm. is the girl. Her the actress name is Amber Mid Thunder. Uh, she's a Native American actress. Oh, she yes. played. Um, uh, Carrie Loudermilk, who is the second, like the other part. Another of, cool scene, like when Lenny was bouncing in I know. and out of yes. the different people. Uh, that and you was see, great, and yeah. the one person that you mm -hmm. don't want to have it is the girl that likes to fight. Yeah. Because yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. like, well, now here like, I come. Yeah. Also, oh, God. <laughs> there's another idea, too, that I, I want to bring up is that how cool would it be if next season all our villain scenes are this Jermaine Clement Aubrey Plaza power combo? Yeah. That, those mm -hmm. are going to be some great yeah. scenes. Because they are, they're almost a. Uh, and casting wise, amazing. A female male version of each other. Yes. They're both kind of weird. They both have like a monotone kind of acting. But strong improv background. Strong improv back and also do nothing in their face but everything in their face, right? Yep. Like Aubrey Plaza never shows much emotion in her face at all, but because when she does show that little bit of emotion, it's amazing. She's Same so with Jimmy Clement. Yeah. 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 
Um, I, I really grew to love this series because I was kind of with you. The, yeah. the pilot was a little slow, but you know that this was this show was sold as eight episodes. It was not a mm -hmm. pilot that they got eight mm -hmm. episodes for. This was eight episodes. No, Holly got it. FX wanted the eight episodes. So we knew it was going to be kind of slow. And this, this series was a slow burn. Yeah. But when a season finale pays off like this one does, sounds the ball thing, even though yep. that was a major thing. I don't know what happens there, but that was a little jarring. When it pays off like this, because when Jermaine Clement is climbing the thing and he's hitting those nuclear reactors and the, the uh, Jesus Christ, Shadow King the Shadow King yep. goes in there and he comes out like Gus Fring after he got his face mm -hmm. blown off and he's like, huh. Well, here also, I go. Also, the beautiful shot, like, again, the, the reason the ball thing, I think, took me off so much is that that beautiful shot of uh, Jermaine Clement and Aubrey Plaza in the car, and it's like, you see on the front of the car, you see Jermaine Clement, the camera t turns, the window rolls down, and as the window rolls down, it reveals Aubrey Plaza, mm -hmm. and then the camera does this giant uh, uh, crane shot showing the car driving off as they're singing, and I was like, that's the perfect way to end that episode. Right, and now we're, it, it could, because... We'll, we're going to talk about the Preacher trailer in a little bit. We're finally getting that Preacher road trip, which is sort of what the graphic novels are mm. basically all about. Is we're going to get like this dynamic road trip between Jermaine Clinton? Are we like? And it's also like how she how interacts with his mind because with David it was always insane. Yeah, some drug induced crazy thing going on like with their relationship mm. with them. It's much. It's more calm. Yes, it's different because his personality is different than David's. Yeah. So I like the the relationship is going to be different than it was. One hundred percent. I was uh, more than pleased with this. One thing that people have been tweeting me about with Legion is, does it throw you guys at off at all that we don't know when it's taking place? Uh, you mean like exact an exact year? Yeah, like a. a because it feels like it's the 70s, but then you see iPads. Well, and you I, see, like, I touch always things. assumed actually that it was just sort of set in the near future that all the X Men movies are. Because the near the the X Men movies always start with that in the not so distant future. And yeah. I assumed mm -hmm. all the 70s stuff was Same because thing. the Jermaine Clement character. Okay. Because he loved that period, and he still dresses like that period. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, it didn't throw me. It off. doesn't bother me. It does. Yeah. No. Because it doesn't seem like they're in the 70s, and they don't play that as a mm -hmm. character. Yeah. Uh, because the car is very nondescript it looks yeah. like an older car but it could also be a newer car what kind of reminds me of this is a little far off but like batman the animated series yeah had that kind of you know very noirish look but there was like yeah. all this future technology like what time is this the 20s or right. the third you know but it doesn't really matter right yeah, yeah. legion keep coming I, I i gotta tell you what maybe my one of my most anticipated season twos of a series in a nice. long time yeah uh because the way it ended just really gave us it's really strong yeah because that movie in 2010 was brutal but it has really nothing to do with <laughs> with the legion that we see now no very Absolutely different. not. Very different. When it came out, I was like, wait a this second. This has redeemed the name of Legion. It really has. Well done. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to go into something you guys have been tweeting at us about uh, all since Friday when it was released, uh, 13 Reasons Why. We talked about the trailer. Uh, it's a young adult based on the young adult novel of the same thing. I will say, watching the pilot, I was like, I don't want to watch the rest of this show. But <laughs> I'm f I know we said we just do a pilot review, but you, how many? I'm four episodes in. Same with me. Four episodes in. I'm hooked. I know there are part that, parts that are cheesy, and it's a young adult show, but it does high school really well. It does like a modern high school because, I mean, I'm showing my age here. Obviously, I'm an old dude, but in high school, we didn't have cell phones. That wasn't even a <laughs> thing. And now, if you're a kid in high school and you don't have a cell phone, I mean, that your whole life is on outcast. those. So, yeah, your whole no. life is on these cell phones. I really hope that, and I know a lot of you out there have binged it, so of my four-episode brain, I just hope that it's not one long PSA about bullying. But it seems like it's it's trending towards not being that. There's some awesome, just like, very shadowy dialogue. It's a lot. It, this show is really a lot of fun. What do you think, Dave? I think it's smartly written. I mean, these kids are obviously interacting with each other in a way that kids that age wouldn't do. I mean, obviously, most of them are being played by 20-year-olds. But yeah. I, think, I think it's fantastic. I think the uh, young man who plays... Clay, I want to make sure I get his name here. Uh, Dylan Minette uh, is is very good. I think his acting is very subtle, but he has a lot of un, you know, like an Aubrey Plaza. Um, his emotions there. It's just it's just it's very subtle. I think these kids are going through so much hardship. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that one of this is the premise. This is not a spoiler. This is just kind of first episode setup. Um, Hannah. <clears throat> young woman has already committed suicide mm -hmm. and she leaves behind this set of tapes or I guess 13 stories with 13 people 13 reasons why she committed suicide and everybody we, we think is somehow involved in that at least from her perspective and one of those people is clay 
Uh, I don't know if Clay's the last one to get the tapes. It seems like, you know, maybe there's a connection. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. Who knows what, what that's going on there. But he's listening to these tapes very slowly uh, over 13 episodes and getting in more uh, deeper look at all these car- people in his high school that he thinks he knows. Yeah. And that's the most interesting part for me is not, I don't care if Hannah's still alive or dead. I, I, this sounds silly, but I don't really care how she died necessarily. I love the interactions because when you're in high school, you think you know somebody. We're putting labels. Josh, you, you, you know, you and I, uh, Jason, I'm not sure what your background is. Like, we played sports. So yeah. you have this classification of guys would that would not played. have been friends. Right. Oh, but this stop. is no, Jason, this is it, though. Like, for me, <laughs> I played I, I, I played football, basketball. But at the same time, I was also an I was AP. I was a track guy. But I was, I, I, was, I was in AP English. I was in band. I love yeah. reading books. And obviously, we're having book talks coming out God, here on Collider. Collider Books Coding. So coming I, I, 2018. What, I, what I'm trying to get to is I love how he's. you think you know somebody, and they're getting to interact with these kids and learning more about who they are at that age, their family lives, what the parents, I think, are very well cast. Always, like, really good character actors. Dude, like, I'm oh, I know you, that person. Kate I know that Walsh person. Walsh plays the embattered mom. Really, she did it in um, uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Mm-hmm. She, she does it really well in this show. I think the parents, not over t- the top, like, you know, how, a lot of times they make parents in coming of age. And, like, well, they're all different. Young adults. I mean, yeah. his dad is like this college professor, yeah. kind of like chill dude, at least from the f- See, episodes I, I've now, seen. I will say that I'm on the exact opposite point of you guys. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew of this book before I, I saw the series. I tried to divorce myself from the book because I do know. You know how it all. I know where this is, going. This is going. I know exactly okay. where this is going. Um, I think the lead actor who plays Clay is great. I uh, haven't seen him since he played uh, young Jack Se- young Jack Shepard, uh, Jack Shepard's son. Excuse me. Can't say Jack Shepard for and some Jack reason. Shepherd's Jack son. Shepherd's son. That's a tough son one. That's a tough one. In the last season of Lost. Yeah. I haven't mm-hmm. seen him since then. Um, it's interesting. I actually turned this off at 30 minutes because mm-hmm. I felt as a TV show, it didn't give me enough of a hook to care about the season. Okay. Uh, now, I will say there have been several shows that have recently mm-hmm. done that. Uh, I think Iron Fist is guilty of that as well. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's intriguing. I know where this is going. Um, it's very interesting because I'm very interested to hear your finale review once you guys get all the way through because yeah. I want to see, do they pay off on this thing? Because I know the payoff of the book, and I want to mm-hmm. see if they pay off. I also don't see where you take this to a second season. Yeah, I don't think it would go to a second I hope not. season. I think mm-hmm. this might be a one-off, but... Uh, you know, Tom McCarthy directed the first two episodes of the show. Don't forget, we got to give credit. Selena Gomez produces. This is yeah. a lot. This is really her project. And this is, and it's really. I, I got to tell you, I know that you turn it off, but I, I'm I'm kind of on board. I, what made you stand? I don't know. There's something kind of uh, really hooky about the tapes, mm-hmm. and thus like listening. And then as like the tapes went on, you see how the characters are kind of coming together. Um, and I really enjoy anything high school that isn't over the top. Kind of like, you know, like, mm-hmm. ice cold, don't worry. It this has like a real feeling to it now mm-hmm. because this is this is happening yeah. in the world, you know. And I think it's it's pretty well done. The jocks aren't too jockey. The mm-hmm. the the boy the the guys are dicks. Like guys can be dicks in high school. The girls are being bitches to each other. It's it is really kind of almost Lee. I mean, just really real in the moment it yeah, really it, feels I think it tangible. captures the struggle of being young and you're you think you're this adult person you're trying to become this adult but you I mean, especially if you're living in suburban america you're yeah. with your parents mm-hmm. and you're at home and you're you're kind of sheltered you're trying to like come up and be your own person and these kids are struggling with that they're trying to have yeah. adult conversations at the coffee shop and they have to go home and deal with mom and dad make sure their homework's done and it's it's just very i think they do a very good job of that yeah uh okay. it's not easy being a young person it really isn't not easy all right or green or green. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go into some highs and lows. <laughs> David was the only person Woo! this this weekend that caught the Rick and Morty season three episode one stream. They did it for basically twenty four hours. Oh, A man. classic Harmon move, Adult Swim yeah, kind of move. Yeah, it was just up. I got home from WonderCon on Saturday, and I got these messages. People were like, "David, Rick and Morty's on. It's no, it's no hoax." So I I click on it. It was yeah. April Fool's Day, and there it is. It's a live stream of Rick and Morty, which yep. is only up for a very short time, but it was. Awesome, and I can see why the season is taking such a long time. I'm not going to spoil anything because the animation is incredible. The yeah. act, there's a lot of action mm-hmm. sequences in this one, and they are all over the place and blood and everything. It's just so good. When nice. I clicked uh, Rick and Morty season three episode one, I said, "Oh, the, I bet somebody ripped it." And yeah, you can, it. it's on YouTube and other places right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You can watch so, it. So. I went and the YouTube one said video not available. Oh, I think they're already. all over it. Okay, yeah. Uh, pulling them down. So, you know, I'd obviously love to catch it, but I'm glad that somebody did it. So, mm-hmm. hi. Yeah, definitely high. Awesome. Can't wait for this to come out. All right, uh, that Big Little Lies finale. Yeah, Cody, throw up the spoiler alert real quick. Oh. Uh-oh. Did, are you, did you watch it? No. I did, did not watch it. Okay. 
Let me just say this. I'm going to say it right in the camera. <laughs> Big Little Lies is the best miniseries HBO has done in a while. I said it already on this, this show. The finale was incredible. The acting, so well done. I predicted last week uh, to a few people on Twitter and to some friends, I think that the person that mm. dies is, or I think that the kid who's bullying it is Nicole Kidman's kid. I know a, couple, a person tweeted me like episode two about mm. that. Nicole Kidman's kid because he sees the dad beating the mom. It was a brutal episode. You felt awful. But the twist at the end to who actually gets like recognition from the group mm -hmm. came out of nowhere and I loved oh, it. Good. I thought it was I thought it was just fantastic. And all those women together, you know, hating each other and then coming full circle to realize that they're all in this struggle together. And I sort of called, and if you're watching, you know, I sort of called the Perry being the bad guy. Other I mean on that, you guys wanted me to talk about the Big Little Lies finale. It's a super high. Well done, HBO. The whole cast and crew, just a really, really well, really, really, really well done uh, miniseries. I heard Josh, I uh, saw some articles online saying, like, why Big Little Lies needs a season two. Could they do one, or is it a perfect one-off? You, you could do a season two, but I don't think you want to. I think it was almost so perfectly done mm -hmm. that to, to do it again, there was a reason why it was seven episodes. Right. There was a reason why it wrapped up so perfectly. It was a seven-episode procedural. Okay. Uh, but with they solved it. They solved it. They solved it. Okay. But did they? Ooh. So, what? I like that. Yeah. I'm only three back. Season two. So. Season two. Yeah. But I'm only three back. <laughs> Super high in Big Little Lies. Uh, Feud, Betty and Joan, are you caught up? One episode back. Okay. It's great, though. I love the show. Yeah. Are it's you watching got my it? Mom I into not it. It's awesome. There's not enough time in the world, I know. guys. Yeah, it's good. It, I, I, <laughs> Iron Fist hurt me a couple weeks back. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. I'm still me. recovering from Iron yeah, Fist. If Jessica Lange and Susan Sarandon don't get nominated for... Emmys. Alfred Molina's fantastic. Alfred as Molina. Well. He isn't even in this episode. I don't know if we see him again the rest of the show, but this episode follows the actual Oscar presentation. It's so good. They, it, Jessica Lang playing Joan Crawford in this. It's just, it's an unbelievable series. FX killing it high. Mm -hmm. uh, Harlots, what'd you think? Har knots for me. Har knots? <laughs> Har knots. So Harlots is this new Hulu series. Uh, it takes place in the mid to late 1700s. You know, it's near the Industrial Sounds Revolution right time. In, in Industrial London. Industrial Revolution show. Yeah. Come on. Um, in London. And it is about uh, prostitution. And you have two rival uh, uh, houses. harlot houses. Prostitution. I was going to say something else, but it's not. Brothels. Right. That's not PC. Yeah. Brothels. Two brothel houses. You have one that's high class. They cater to the, the gentleman. And yeah, when that's a lower yeah, class, yeah. probably where Josh and I would go if we were looking for that kind whoa, of excitement. Whoa, Josh hey. is engaged, so he would never do that. He hey. would never do that. He would never do that. David. Josh would never do just that. He's a great guy. Class. I'm just saying, no. if we were around that time, and you and I were friends, we are both single, you and I might venture over to the Harlot. What? Maybe not. Okay, Josh is... Maybe not, maybe I would be maybe. going with the classiest of classes. Well, I probably couldn't afford that, so I would go to the lower class. But anyway... If you're going to spend your money on something, David, you spend it on high-class prostitutes. That's true. Everybody knows that. That's true. I thought this was God. a solid premiere. And you want to run book club. Hey, you gotta save money. Those books aren't cheap. Hard I'm, books are I'm just surprised you didn't learn your lesson from Taboo about that. That's yeah. a good point. High class. There's that high class is. You don't trouble. want the ones by the dock. That's right. That's that's a good point. True. But I actually enjoyed. It. I thought it was a solid <laughs> premiere. It's not perfect. I don't know. I'll give it a couple more. I'd like okay. to see a little more to see if it gets better. But it didn't like grab me like, oh, this is so good. I watched the whole pilot. I gotta tell you, man, I was bored. Really? Really bored, unfortunately. I, and, and I thought it was going to be really cool because it opens with the line, one in five women living in London were working as sex workers. And I was like, what? They're trying to show you the hustle. London? Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, it was rough back then. It, you know, they, 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 it was hard for them to get jobs. But also, too, I want to talk about um, another show. I think it's called Maison Place. And if you're French or you know that French show, please correct me if I'm wrong. It's another show about a... Um, a brothel house. I don't know. I have too much trouble saying brothel brothels. house. Just brothel. Just a brothel. It's just a brothel. It's already yeah, that's, that's your already Jack house. Shepherd's son. Uh, definitely check that out. Uh, it's it's French, obviously. I think it takes place in <laughs> Paris, and it's very good. I think it's a little better than this. Uh, check Maison. I think it's Maison Place is how you say it. French, and it takes place in Paris. Yeah. Who knew? Paris uh, is in fr France. So I'm giving Harlots like a trending down. I'll give Not it a full I'll, down. I'll, I'll give it a trending, trending up. Okay. Trending up. Okay. Uh, Jason, our favorite show, The Americans. Ah, always a thumbs up. Okay. Mm. Let me. I think that maybe the the funniest part and one of the cooler parts is that Paige is now thinking that she's a spy which I kind of <laughs> dig yeah. right she's like you don't know you weren't there right but I like that she's sort of buying into this mm -hmm. this kind it'll, of thing. it'll be an interesting thing to see how much this progresses like yeah. will we end the Americans with Paige being a fully fledged spy yeah. or will she just completely uh reject her mom and dad yeah or it, the, it's the struggle of the series because we have 
there is an end game, which is a beautiful thing. Yep. Do they die? Does Paige take over? Does Henry die? Because Henry now is getting sort of a storyline. Because the first few yeah. episodes, Henry was just like, hey, mom, hey, well, dad. Well, it's always <laughs> been the joke of the Americans is to um, make fun of the excuses that Paige gives for why Henry's not around. Like, Henry's yeah. kind of been ignored this entire, for five seasons. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like the son in Homeland, the yeah. first couple episodes. So mm -hmm. That kid was such a pansy. Uh, but I loved that in this episode, because usually when they go and get marks, mm -hmm. they it's easy because it's like a sex-based thing. And this is what it was. She won, and he is clearly going after a lesbian, but they don't really like know what lesbians yeah, yeah. are at that point. Uh, but I thought it was a, a super fun dynamic with trying to their spy life overlapping with the family life, because now they have to basically be traveling back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you know that Bob Beeman is going to figure out, or Stan Beeman, is Stan Bob Beeman. Beeman was the long jumper in the 1976 Olympics in Mexico wow, City. that's a reference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stan Beeman, um, <clears throat> he's going to recognize the travel agents really don't travel that much. They are supposed to book Well, travel. he hasn't recognized it for five years now. So Terrible. I, I don't know, man. Whenever they decide to reveal to Stan their true Ooh. identity as KGB agents, it, it's going to be a television moment like the moment when Hank in Breaking Bad realized who Walter White was. I it's know. gonna be one of these moments. And I have a feeling, my prediction is it's this season's finale. Yeah. yeah. Because next season mm, is our last totally. season. I think we're gonna have a whole season with Stan Bean knowing exactly who they are. Yeah, and how to take it down. Yep. With, yep. There you go. Hi, Americans. Oh, double high. Uh Goldberg's prom episode, just awesome. Hi for me. Hi. Yeah, you I love saw, Goldberg's I, I, too. I, gotta say, I love Goldberg. God, man, yeah, the yeah. prom episode was so much fun. It's really, anything Jeff Garland I love. So, I know, and right? Goldberg's just been killing it. Killing it. Uh, the Modern Family episode this week um, is weird simply because they are trying to force this like Nathan Fillion love storyline down mm -hmm. our throat with the with the one daughter. Oh, he's in it this season? He's in it. And it just makes no sense. And he proposed marriage and they're like, we're not going to get married. It oh, was the oldest fun. daughter? The oldest daughter, oh, yeah, yeah with Sarah Helen. But hi for hmm. me. Uh, there's an uh, opiate epidemic series in the works at HBO. Uh, which kind of takes place in my backyard, uh, which I'm looking to, where I grew up anyway. Sounds uh, like a children's show. Great. Yeah, real uh, and, and Family friendly. Looking at eight to ten episodes, basically <laughs> because, uh, we weirdly enough, places like Huntington, West Virginia, are like the, the epicenter of, of uh, heroin overdoses in this country. Mm. Because wow. all these people are getting addicted to Oxycontins, mm -hmm. and then they can't afford it, so they go to heroin and they're ODing. It's crazy, uh, and it's based off... But the guy that that is doing it is from Detroit, and there's a crazy amount of heroin overdoses in Detroit. So it's starting in like the Rust Belt, mm -hmm. and all these people that are addicted from either injury or coming back from, uh, you know, from war, uh, mm -hmm. soldiers and that kind of stuff. And this is a fiction series, not a docu. It's based on true stuff, but it's going to be a fiction series. Okay. Yeah. So hmm. hi for that. It's going to be on HBO. Expanse, boys, talk. Ugh. So good. We're, we're, we're diving deep into the second book of The Expanse, if mm -hmm. you remember that book series, and it, we're, the stuff is starting to get really good. I love how they talk about how they deal with science in the series, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you're having right now, because you know it's like it's Mars and Earth and the Belters, and there's some Martians on Earth, and we get to seeing how Martians interact with Earth's gravity. If you're born on Mars, like how you deal with that. They have you're, an, yeah, they have yeah an, Earth's gravity if yeah. you're born on Mars is like really heavy to you. Yeah, they talk about yeah. like like the horizon, like looking at the, the horizon mm -hmm. is different. You know, the atmosphere. It's just, it's. It, I love all the science. It's a and dense even show. the blue sky was a thing. Yeah. Like, like she's just like, oh, you know, like I don't, blue sky. Yeah, yeah I don't, I've never Where's seen the a ocean? blue sky before. Where's the ocean? Yeah, yeah. I want to <laughs> see the ocean. It is really, it, it's, I, I told you, I'm episode five of season one. So mm -hmm. I will be caught up so that when season three breaks. Mm -hmm. If you're tired of seeing all these, we're talking to Dennis in the back. And if you're tired all these articles about the expanse is the sci-fi show the best sci-fi yep. show you're not watching there's a reason why because you're not watching it so, so watch go it. watch it watch yeah it. go watch it all right let's burn through this next one preacher trailer boom hi uh, i'll say thumbs up yeah. i'll say it's thumbs good. up We're yeah that, this that was little, the first season was a little uneven yeah. exactly yeah we'll um, see uh, the Kennedys, I don't know if you guys watched it. It's the second uh, after Camelot. Matthew Perry with the Boston accent is hysterical. That is a low for me. Uh, <laughs> crashing on HBO. Uh, it's I like the premiere I thought was solid. I haven't yeah, seen any more. I'm, like I'm keeping up. I, it's been in really all over the place mm -hmm. series. Not many laughs, mm -hmm. but uh, a really kind of like heartfelt stand-up comedy series, yeah, which is which is pretty good. fun. Uh, the Girl Boss trailer on Netflix. Did any of you guys watch that? Did not see it. It's about the girl that started Nasty Gal. Mm -hmm. uh, Britt Roberts stars in it. Looks pretty fun. She's kind of blowing lie. up. Yeah, yeah she's blowing like up. Her. And finally, The Get Down. Coming back on Netflix this it's week. Coming back real quick. You're the only one. You yeah. finished I that. Finished it. I, you and, I did not finish it. Oh, man. You and uh, Medina. Medina finished that. Loved The Get Down. Man. It yeah. really took an awesome turn. All right, let's go to Twitter questions. Hashtag a Collider TV Talk. Again, uh, if you guys have questions all during the week, just hashtag a Collider TV Talk. I'm going to rip them. We only have one this week because I really liked it. Comes from Chris Hammer Ulrich at Chris in the Zoo. Maybe he's from Oakland. 
Uh, oh, ho. Or Reese, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Ka- Kalamazoo, Michigan. There you go. Possible. Chris in the zoo. At Josh McCougar, we've seen FX make the jump to premium. Must see content like HBO. Which network's next, and how can they do it? What do you guys think? Uh, I think Sundance TV might already be there. With okay. Rectify. There's another series. People were asking us, like, do you guys watch Happen, Happen. Leonard? I watched, like, the first three episodes of season one. Thought it was, yeah, I thought it was pretty yeah. good. Um, Sundance is close. AMC is still a little inconsistent for me. Okay. I think FX is putting out better content, you know, more often. Sure. But AMC is close, uh, for sure. I mean, they have their, their losses, like a tyrant, which I watched every episode, mm-hmm. or The Strain. But uh, there's some good ones that got away. Yeah. Like Rubicon. I think very interesting show. I mm-hmm. think honestly that they're a, a channel that not a lot of people are watching. Audience Network, which is an mm-hmm. AT&T network, is really per, is really doing some good stuff. I loved Ice on there, and I think Kingdom is great. This is DirecTV mm. AT&T. Yeah, yeah. yeah DirecTV yeah, yeah. AT&T thing. And you know they were the ones that that jumped on board with Friday Night Lights. I think that they are poised for a great show to bust out. They just need one of those award winning shows. Audience. They Network. have the money. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you, David. I think it's uh, AMC, mm-hmm. and it's a possibility that like whenever they decide maybe to launch the third Walking Dead series, that they'd be like, oh, this is the flagship show of the new AMC premium network. Uh, But I agree with you. FX has been more consistent than AMC, so but AMC seems to be poised to do this. Yeah, the new show The Sun coming out with Pierce Brosnan. That looks Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. We need like a... And Better Call Saul's coming back as well. Yeah, yeah. I'd love love for some of these sci-fi series to get some award recognition. It's uh, hard. Battlestar, as good as it was, I mean, people were calling it like one of the best shows on television. The Emmys don't like like genre. And the last time that a... Same with the Oscars. And I might be completely wrong about this, but like the the, the last genre show that got nominated for like a best drama that I can remember Mm -hmm. was Star Trek The Next Generation got nominated in 1994 for best drama. Yeah. And But since then, I don't... Besides Lost, which is... Is a sci-fi show, uh, but I don't think any other sci-fi show has made it into that best drama. It's and, tough, and it's and, and we, you, I'm sure a lot of people out there like premium content. Will the networks ever get involved? The networks have to change a lot of things before they can get involved in premium content. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that love Scandal and the Shonda Block and all that kind of stuff. It's never been my thing, uh, which is why we pretty much don't talk about it on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but regardless, thank you for sending in a Twitter question. Hashtag Cloudy TV Talk. You guys are the best. <laughs> Final part of the show, Jason Inman's pick of the week. All right. Legion, it Legion just ended it this yes. week, right? All right. Well, I wanted to, to give you something that will scratch that itch. Have you guys ever heard of The Prisoner? No. The Prisoner is a 1967 British television show. It's no. only 18 episodes. Uh, David, is right down your alleyway. Ooh, um, this will scratch your Deep Legion cut itch. from Jason Inman. Yeah, this, uh, this, is, uh, this will scratch your Lost itch, X-Files. All the This show is everything and more. It is... Um, not only does it have the best opening credit sequence of all time, really? go watch it, go do yourself a favor, pause this video, go Google that, the prisoner opening credits, and, and I dare you to tell me it's not the best Whoa. opening credits of all time. Um, Inman. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, the basic story of this, <clears throat> of this series. It's like James Bond. It is James Bond related. A secret agent for the mm. British government decides to retire. Oh no. He goes home. He falls asleep, and when he wakes up, he's in this mysterious place called The Village. Now, The Village is a prison. And he cannot shovel. leave, <laughs> and no one calls each other by their names. He now is only called by number six. Oh, no. Everyone in The Village calls mm. him number six. And here's the thing. 18 episodes of the show, you never learn his real name. What? He's only called number six. Oh, now, no. a big thing about this series is all about... Um, Number six, trying to figure out who is number one, who is the big boss of the show, and he doesn't figure it out until the final episode. Mm -hmm. And it's all about um, individualism versus group and whether whether you can go with the masses against them. It's very subversive. For the 60s, it is a show that was so ahead of its time. I only saw it because it was on PBS, probably after Masterpiece Theater. Um, But I'm going to give you another little taste of this. Every time you try to leave the village, these giant white orbs follow you they're called rovers and they absorb you and they take you right back to the village this is in 1967 this show exists this sounds awesome um it is very heady it's very deep it's very obtuse uh patrick mcgoohan is the main actor of the show you probably every american probably knows him best because he was king longshanks and braveheart he's he's the guy who throws his uh his uh gay son's boyfriend out the window in braveheart (laughs) he's that guy great coffer but um it (laughs) besides the costumes and besides the quality of the camera that it's shot on, you could literally film every one of these scripts 
right now with a modern camera and a modern costume sensibility, and you would swear that this show was written last this week. This is poised. Is, this on, for... is it like on Amazon Prime? It or is something? not. You have to buy it. it. There's a Blu-ray set. It is. I think it, you can buy it on Amazon. It is not streaming anywhere. Uh, but it, it is an amazing, it's one of... This sounds like it's poised for a remake with like a Netflix or an Amazon. Well, they tried to remake it. AMC tried to make it re with Jim Caviezel and Ian McKellen. With Jesus. Six, six episodes. It didn't quite work. They set it in the desert. They made uh, it more about Afghanistan. So it didn't quite okay. work. Um, but this series, um, you talk about Legion having so many levels. Every episode of The Prisoner has 18 different levels. People are still trying to decipher the finale to this day. What? Yeah. The Prisoner. Wow. Do yourself a favor. One of the greatest television shows of all time. The Prisoner. Yeah. Jason Inman's pick of the week here on Clatter TV Talk. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That'll do it for us here today. Before we get out of here, where can the good people find you? Jason Inman. Uh, you can find me every week on DCL Access. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Do all kinds of flash theory, review videos, stuff like that. And then my podcast on iTunes, Geek History Lesson, Geek every single week. History Lesson. Thanks for being here, buddy. Love having Thank you, you on. I'm excited to be the uh, first official guest of uh, Collider Book Talk. Yes. Oh, I won't be a guest on that. No, you will not. But your guest here every week, not just a guest, <laughs> my co-host, my good buddy, David <laughs> oh, Anthony like Gruber, Cheshire Griffin the Third. <laughs> so uh, our first episode of uh, Book Talk, make sure you prepare by reading Herman Melville's classic, Moby Dick. I call will not me, be the first guest. Call uh, me uh, Ishmael. <laughs> Remember that. Keep that in your heads. We're going to be talking about Moby Dick. It's classic. There's been a lot of movie adaptations. I can't wait for a Clatter TV talk. I mean, Book Talk to start up. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's not happening. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, Matt Griffin DE. I'm also going to be on Heroes tomorrow with John Schnapp. I'm also going to be on Jedi Council uh, Thursday. There you go. You're here every day. David day. Every day. Griffin, the man, the myth, the legend. Guys, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. I want to say a special <clears> thank you to everybody that came out to the Troll Hunters panel at WonderCon. It was great meeting all of you. Uh, and thank you to DreamWorks Animation for uh, letting me moderate that. It was a real, real pleasure and honor. Uh, you guys can see my show, The Josh McCuga Show, on YouTube. We're here every Monday on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.